welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. We are your hosts, Josefa Kapadia and Jasper Rivers. Get paid for your pad. 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 Welcome to this Christmas edition of Get Paid for Your Pad. First of all, I hope everyone's having an amazing Christmas. I'm back here in Holland with my parents, and it's it's great to be with the family. I don't get to see them too often. And uh, today I've got a, two very interesting guests on the show, and their names are Taras and Yolanda, and they are uh, from the Nelson Manor, which is a boutique vacation rental in Washington. Welcome to the show, Taras and Yolanda. Hi, thank you. Hey, how you doing, Jasper? Happy to be here, Jasper. Yeah, thanks, thanks for uh, taking the time. I'm excited to hear uh, about your story. Um, for those who are listening, the Nelson Manor, it, there's, uh, if you look at the nelsonmanor.com, you can see it's a, it's a pretty amazing uh, home. And so we're going to learn all about uh, how Yolanda and Taras has made this uh, a very successful Airbnb uh, business. How's uh, how's Airbnb in Washington in general? Are there, is it uh, is it pretty Airbnb friendly over there? Uh, they are uh, going through just like traditional place, uh, normal places in and uh, throughout the nation um, where they're having restrictions. Um, we're also in an area that is also come up with um, different types of criteria that Airbnbs must meet. Um, and then, of course, we're in a very competitive, you know, heavily populated area. area with all the hotels that are in this region. It's basically something so uh, heavily with a lot of tourists. Uh, you know, that's where we are located. We're located about 20 minutes outside of Washington, D.C., in the suburbs, uh, Port Washington, Maryland, just outside of the National Harbor, Maryland. So that's where the MGM is, Tanger Outlets. We're mm-hmm. about less than 10 minutes from Old, Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia a lot of tourist uh, destination spots. So we have the location down. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just a matter of making sure we're marketing ourselves um, to, I mean, we, we celebrate our, our hotels, of course, but we, we like the fact of uh, offering that little family charm, yeah. residential feel that, you know, of course, Airbnbs offer, especially as some close. <laughs> and I think what you guys have done really well is, is obviously the branding, the, Nel- the Nelson Manor, um, yes. but also the website, the nelsonmanor.com. It looks very, it looks very professional. And so, is that something that you guys had in mind when you started with Airbnb to really create that brand? <laughs> well, you know, well, <laughs> sorry. Well, initially, uh, the idea was just to try to come up with some supplemental income um, in preparation for our children um, that were getting ready to leave. Um, we're newly empty nesters. I would say we're in year two of being empty nesters. So we decided to kind of come up with a plan so that um, we can monetize our home in preparation for their departure. Uh, and so it was just a, uh, 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 our first unit at, at, uh, when we first started. Um, but then we started to see the full scale and capabilities of what we could offer with having a, a home that we have in this area. Um, where we are, we have a single family home that happens to have a basement and a main floor in the upper level. Uh, you know, and throughout the, the, the world, you'll see different designs of homes. Some can be ramblers or, but they didn't have the full ability that the Nelson Manor has where we can create units versus renting out rooms. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the property because it's, it's a six bedroom, three and a half bathroom, uh, home. And, and you guys have a cottage in, in the garden. Um, right. So how, how, do you, how, do you, uh, how do you decide what, what is the best way to rent it out? Because you, do, you, do have, uh, you have two separate units, but then you also rent it out the entire home. Right. So, so what we have is a quarter acre prop- property. 
And we figured how can we uh, get the most out of it with the little bit of uh, uh, parcel that we do have. Um, when we would always look at our friends that were, uh, you know, getting into real estate for investment properties, uh, we noticed a common theme. Um, one property would be in one state and another property would be, you know, thousands of miles away in another state. And it looked like it became an administrative nightmare uh, trying to manage those resources. Right. Uh, and then so they, they would have uh, property managers. And then once they came down and looked at the final numbers, you know, after paying property tax and et cetera, um, there was very little to see as a profit, if any profit at all. So uh, what we did was, uh, you know, we were big fans of uh, the show, the tiny house movement and tiny house nation. Uh, and so when we looked at our property, we said, um, how could we put something here that would give us the best bang for our buck? Uh, most people would have, you know, when we first thought about improving our home, we were thinking about expanding a bedroom over, over a garage. Uh, would have probably cost us sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars, and given us little return on our investment. Um, but instead, we decided to build a little cottage, um, kind of off of that whole premise of what Tiny House Nation has and being eco-friendly. Uh, and we made the most amazing 320 square foot rental unit, uh, which we proudly named the Potomac Cottage. Um, everything in the Nelson Manor has a, a name that has to do with Maryland. So that was our very first rental unit. Um, and it just took off. It is such a masterpiece of a smart home in such a small, confined space. Uh, and the first year, because we we're just starting year two, and that rental unit was completely booked. Um, where we were able to start and transform the next rental unit, which was the Annapolis apartment. Um, this was our basement apartment unit, which is a thousand square foot. So we turned that into a one bedroom with a suite. So um, these are all high end Tempur-Pedic beds in the units. Uh, and so then we had those two units running simultaneously. Um, and since we're near all the entertainment epicenter in this entire area you know we had people coming for conferences for uh, business meetings for entertainment and we were fully booked and so last but not least we wanted to do the main floor and upstairs which is the Maryland house and that's five more bedrooms uh, five more bedrooms two and a half more baths uh, and that's for our larger groups and so then you know if people can rent those individual options or you can take the entire property, which we named the Nelson Manor, and that entire property on that quarter acre can sleep 12 to 14 guests very comfortably. Um, it, is, it is something where it's very transformable. Um, you know, any given time, um, any of the units are very comfortable where you can just want to relax in them at any given moment. Uh, and they've just been a hot seller in this area. Awesome. And you guys live in the in the uh, cottage when, when you have guests? So the idea is each of these units that I, we described to you, this was all homegrown. So my wife, she decorated each of these units. Uh, we did not know that she, well, I guess she knew, she knew, let me take that back. She knew she had such an, a creative interior decorating uh, uh, niche that she had. And so all the units um, are so comfortable that at any given time, whichever one is not rented, we will stay in that unit. So um, if the, 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 the manor, uh, I mean, if the Maryland house, the main floor and the upstairs is rented, we can easily stay in the apartment downstairs. Um, and so now that gives us a lot of flexibility. Again, our number one obstacle we wanted to overcome was distance with rentals. So, you know, any given time, we can touch all of our rentals at any given moment. We have total uh, uh, control over, uh, you know, maintaining security, maintaining uh, quality assurance, um, maintaining uh, the marketing, everything and in, in interaction with our guests we have firsthand engagement with because everything is right here on this one particular piece of property. Yeah, I think it's very smart how you guys went about this. Um, one question I have is, I notice you know you guys focus on branding and you have your own website. Do you list on a lot of other uh, platforms as well? Yeah. So, um, so this is the reason. So we were on Airbnb, VRBO, 
Uh, we were starting to get into bookings a little bit, but you know, just you know, this was a little bit. Uh, I would say a, a little bit over a year ago when um, it was in its infancy stages as far as you know, minimize the cancellations and everything. So we were on Airbnb, and we still are. Um, but you know what? Um, we felt the high end aesthetics, the privacy, the amenities, the location. Um, that we really can't compete on that Airbnb platform because everyone on there is trying to shortcut on the price. Um, you know, you got listings coming up every day, and of course, those ones get pushed to the front. Um, and so, when someone looks at ours, which has a price tag which is priced accordingly, um, it doesn't get spotlighted as much, which is why we felt the need to start to brand on our own and create our own site. So, we still sync all those calendars up. Uh, we still service uh, people from Airbnb, um, but um, we're on our repeat season now. We're on year two now. So throughout this whole year, we've been gathering our email addresses and maintaining our mailing mailing list, uh, engagement with our, our previous clientele. So now we've got repeat customers, and it now allows us to fully take uh, ownership of, of, of our customers. Um, of our platform where we don't have to compete because people already know what the standard is. We're at, you know, we deliver Airbnb plus quality and above. All right. So that's a really interesting topic. And I know that this is something that a lot of people struggle with, which is, you know, how do you use your, your own website uh, to, to mark for, um, for marketing purposes? How do you stay in touch with customers? How do you get those repeat customers? So I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. First of all, um, you know, how, how do you collect the email addresses? Because somebody books on Airbnb, you get this weird, uh, you know, this temporary email address, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So how do we collect them? Um, well, we have our, um, our, we have groups on social media that we interact in with um, uh, friends. One's one called Friends of the Nelson Manor. And uh, so we, we get folks in that group, and then from that group, that's where we, uh, we require their email first before joining the group. Now, when you look at VRBO, they, of course, give you the, their, they, they provide you the person's email address. Um, when they book through our platform, we can get their real email address. But Airbnb, it's a funny thing, but Airbnb, you couldn't see their email address until they actually confirmed the booking. Once they confirm the booking, I would blatantly, I would blatantly send them a message and say, hey, you know what? Thanks for choosing to stay at the Nelson Manor. Hey, can we please get your email address so we can add you to our mailing list for future? Stay in touch. Yeah, so we can give you discounts and, and things that you won't get at, 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 through the Airbnb platform. So then they voluntarily give it their information, or when they come here on site, you know, in addition to showing your uh, your driver's license to confirm who you are, hey, be so kind and jot down your email address. And also, too, I mean, it's. I mean, hosting, you, we get to know these people, you know, we get to know our visitors, our guests, you know, and they become more than just guests. Some of them, you know, we really like to stay in touch with them. So that touch of hospitality, you know, and being open and willing to, um, you know, form those relationships with folks, you know, that, that helps to bring them back again and again. You know what, just to touch on what Yolanda said, that was the key point. Our hospitality has superseded the property. If you look at our responses and our feedback from people who have stayed here, you'll see they'll comment more on Taurus and Yolanda as far as their hospitality and the warmth that they felt here. And then they will go into the property, which means now that allows us to build our brand and it helps the Nelson Man Manor brand to be a little bit more solidified once we start going out there in the public space with social media and our website. So that customer service, that availability um, that we are, we, because we are, we pride ourselves on being immediately available um, to our guests um, so that they feel, um, you know, they're, they're most important. They are our most important um, priority when they are here. Um, and then also, um, Taurus and I are developing professionally. We have, um, we have joined on with the uh, National Concierge Association of Washington, D.C., and um, you're familiar with concierges, of course, when you go to your hotel stays, those are the people who um, help to arrange your stay, your trips, um, while you're in, on vacation. 
Um, and so that's where um, we're affiliates right now, but we are working hard towards endorsement, which will completely verify us uh, as a major a destination stay um, that can pretty much tell guests where all the happening spots are in Washington, D.C. and the surrounding area. So that also is another service that we do for our, our guests to help them feel at home so that when um, they choose to stay with us, we're in contact with them to ask them, hey, what do you want to do while you're here and what can we offer you? Is there any particular um, thing? Do you need car service? Would you prefer to be picked up? at the airport when you come or when you're getting ready to leave, you know, what is it that you need to help you cater your stay? So you want some Teslas. Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah we, we've got comfortable. great relationships yeah. Yeah, with folks. Yeah. And so they, they're, they're, um, they leave with a wonderful experience and then they want to tell their friends about it. And that's the key word she said, which was experience. And that's where we're taking it, where it's outside of just lodging, but it's more of an experience yeah. where people are eagerly looking forward to booking a stay here. That's our goal is to have our calendar booked out because people want the experience. Feeling special, that one-on-one one -on -one attention, and I know that's what we get. Another thing I think that you guys are doing really well is your Instagram marketing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the missus. <laughs> <laughs> she's awesome at it, yeah. She's, yeah. Been, uh, she's been, and you know what? We're, we're, we're new to, you know, using Instagram uh, because, you know, we really weren't marketing hospitality before. We're not so new. We've learned a little. Yeah, but you know, but the thing is, you know, before, you know, we were marketing for individual, you know, everyone was putting their personal items out there as an Instagram and hashtagging, right? But it changes once you're now doing a business and you're now trying to market for hospitality. Right. And I mean, just your target audience. Your target audience, audience yeah. You know, and, and the other thing is, is being able to capture the feeling um, that you want mm. others to, you want that feeling evoked in others so that they understand exactly who you are, what you are. And slowly over time, you connect with, with different audiences. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, looking at our natural products that we use here um, at the Nelson Manor, you know, of course, and that's, there's a lot of cross-branding that happens as well. So it's kind of like a win-win situation for everyone. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's just one, one, one post at a time, but um, hopefully, hopefully that one post will help uh, – reach out to others who are looking for a wonderful vacation stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think for anyone who is thinking about using Instagram to market to uh, market their Airbnb or their vacation rental, uh, take a look at the Nelson Manor um, because I think you guys are doing a lot of things, right? First Thank of you. All, there's, you know, it's very personal. You're showing the property, but you're also showing yourself. So people, right. can, people can really connect with you uh, through your Instagram. And it's also very, uh, very nicely, it's alternating photos and, you know, little notes that guests have left behind. There's videos, but then there's also uh, these different, uh, like, memes or um, what, what would you call them, uh, you know, little quotes uh, yes. or just a, just, a, just a good day or... or yes. Mm -hmm. And that's again, good, I think that's again. really smart. Yeah, oh, evoking on the feelings, evoking on... Um, just that every day, things that people don't really think about, but when you're traveling, the feeling that you'll have when you're traveling. Um, so, so that's where I, I get those quotes from. You know, uh, Taurus and I travel, have traveled quite a bit. Um, and so we know as travelers what we expect and what we want, which is why on Airbnb we work so hard to um, become super hosts and to maintain that. Um, we understand that we just don't want to provide a, a shell of a home for people. We want them to come here and to feel at home. So down to the decor, you know, the decor and everything. So that's why we consider ourselves luxury vacation rental property. Um, with the memes on Instagram, we want to convey that. We want them to see and feel luxury, especially those who are global and maybe looking to come to the States to, um, to stay near our nation's capital. Um, you know, we just like to provide another option for them that's in a tourist area that's 20 minutes outside of Washington, D.C., so they can explore. You know, a lot of us, when we travel, we love to explore, so that'll be a meme too, right? <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And you're also, another thing that you're doing really well, 
And, and I, I pay attention to these things because I'm actually working my own Instagram. <laughs> uh, I get paid for your pad where I'm adding stories and I'm doing yes. some IGTV. And I've noticed you've, you've, uh, you're have you doing that as well. You've got all sorts of di- different categories in your stories. There's, there's production, media, events, decor, bedrooms, the grounds. There's you know, all these, these collections of uh, stories of highlights, what you call them on Instagram. And you've got a couple of uh, videos on your IGTV as well. Yeah. So it's about human connection, letting them know that we, we are so much more than just the, the rental property. Um, and then too, we have a lot of people, which is why we're on here as well, who are interested in engaging and they want to know how we're doing it. We get, we get a lot of messages on how are you doing this and but a lot of it is as entrepreneurs we're just more courageous you know I, you know as far as being an entrepreneur you just have to take risks a lot of risk and at first a lot of people looked at us like you're crazy <laughs> for doing what we're doing but um it does pay off tenacity and perseverance um and then of course through our instagram and everything making that human connection because a lot of people out here they want to know why they want to know how, you know, so we're giving them those nuggets over time and hopefully, um, of course, to inspire them, but of course, to build our brand. Another question I want to ask is, you know, how often do you email your uh, past guests? Well, traditionally, we uh, do it once a week. I mean, excuse me, once a month. Um, but when we went down to, uh, you know, the, the giving uh, at, at the holiday season, then of course we had, you know, the, the Friday sales and the, uh, the giveaways. yeah, the black, the black Friday sales and the Saturday giveaway sales. Um, right now we've come up with a promo codes, um, that we'll give out occasionally, um, just to give, uh, incentives. Um, we try not to like spam. Yeah, we don't spam them. But when we say, "Hey, you know, we have a we have a, an offering here which may be beneficial," just like one that we want to offer, you know, your listeners, your listeners, as where, well. where 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 it incentivizes them to to visit the Nelson Man. Yeah. Okay, so uh-huh. you're answering my next question as well, because uh, I was going to ask you as well, like, what kind of content do you send out? So it's mainly promotional codes. Yeah, it's promotional codes, but another thing that we send out is because we're members of the National Concierge Association Affiliates, we also do uh, visits to great locations within the D.C. area. So uh, whether it's the, uh, uh, the, the Basilica, Basilica. Uh, we went there at Christmas, and each month we go somewhere new. So we were at Ruth Chris, who had uh, a holiday gathering and we were able to speak to some of their managers and, and what happens is those, uh, those locations and venues we go through, go to, they, there's an opportunity for them to market and advertise their space. So we put those inside of our newsletters as well. So our recommendations as well, of course, as places con- to visit concierge affiliates, you know, that's, that's what our job is. We want to, you know, tell, tell people this is what we have to offer in the area around us. Uh, whether they're five minutes away or 20 minutes away in the nation's capital. um, That's, I mean, that's the benefit that we receive and we hope that we give as well as far as um, those codes and which we do through social media mostly. Did you focus on one channel like Instagram or because I know you have a Facebook uh, page Mm -hmm. as well, right? Yes. So are, there, yeah. are, you, are, any other, are you just basically, uh, are you going on all the channels so, um, or do you really focus on one? We focus primarily on two, which are IG and Facebook. Uh, and we're still growing. We're still growing. We're still, uh, because we have such great video and picture content, we're trying to grow our Pinterest and Twitter followers. Yeah, we just started with um, Pinterest. Actually, I'm still just learning how to work Pinterest. Um, Twitter, we do have something on Twitter, so we're still trying to understand <laughs> that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, we're still growing. That's something that we're we're working on. But part of it is too. Part of it too with the social media aspect is how to optimize it and not just go after every platform. Right. And so that's what do we're learning well. to do. So you know, at first, you know, we wanted to push it out in our personal pages and and our friends' friends' pages. Yeah, we, <laughs> we were just telling everybody to push it out. But then, you know, after a while, we become a little bit more, you know, a strategic, strategic. In, in, in our message delivery. Um, we know that Instagram is heavy on visual content, so. Um, what and we more, do, and a more global, and, and, and of course, there's a more global audience. 
um, that are looking to travel here. So what we do is make sure that, you know, every quarter we're producing good quality content um, from the Nelson Manor, whether it's uh, uh, from a photo shoot. Uh, we just posted a video where a young lady artist came here and did a Thank video you. shoot for uh, a Christmas video shoot for Santa Baby singing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, um, we'll probably have something once the spring comes. So there's always fresh content being put out. Awesome. Well, I think you guys are really innovating a little bit here with the with the marketing. It's really cool to see. Uh, before I let you go, I was wondering, do you, do you use any tools at all to, to manage your listings? Uh, well, let's put it like this. Uh, our, our, the site that we've created right now, was on, which is, which is um, by one of your previous guests, is, is through Logify. Um, right. And we've been using their channel management uh, a tool. Um, but since we're primarily just on, you know, like I said, uh, Airbnb and VRBO, it's kind of limited just to those two platforms. Right. So you don't really need any yeah, other tools. So what, 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 what we're really trying to do is get to one centralized one that would help us with all of it, which is, you know, pricing and scheduling and everything. But we just haven't found the right one um, at this stage right now. But, you know, like I said, we're still growing in this. Uh, we know we still got plenty of improvement to do, like with our website. Uh, 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 but what, what we do have and what Logify has helped us do is create something really quick that got us out the way from stopping people from purchasing, you know, and, and booking their stays. You know, so we've got a nice secure platform. People can see what's offered and they can book and it doesn't require us to get in the way, which is, you know, the number one objective from the, you know, going on that platform. Awesome. Very, cool. very, very cool. I didn't realize it was a Logify website, actually. Yeah. One more thing. I just wanted to go back to, you were talking about how we were marketing on the, of the platforms we're marketing on. Taurus had brought up how, you know, we're a couple, so it's interesting. And this is just one nugget that we had to, we found out as we were looking at our strategy. Um, when we started, we started on our personal pages. And then we noticed that we shared over 500 people. So when Taurus would blast out and I would blast out, people were getting bombarded. So that's the one thing um, that we've learned over time is not to oversaturate and bombard because then that does feel like, like scamming. So we just had to make choices as far as um, our pages and platforms. So that's another reason why we created Friends of the Nelson Manor and why, we, why Nelson Manor page was created as well um, so that we weren't over bombarding our friends mm -hmm. and, and, and we've come to learn that and family we've come to learn that the email address is the key to the city it, 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 really it, the email address is so much more powerful than social media you know and 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 right now we're trying to be as creative as possible and obtaining freely when people want to provide their email address right. you know whether it's through joining our group we obtain it that way or through our page or through offerings and discounts but ultimately, and even that's their what we're trying to if, if Once they've enjoyed the experience. Yeah, and visitors. You know, you, you can talk with them after, and if they're willing to, to give, that's they it. will give. So. That's the tip. And it's like, again, just uh, human connection. That's what it's about. Awesome. One final question. If somebody was to start kind of what you guys have started, uh, what would be like the, the, the three major pieces of advice that you would have for them? Uh, to get started, I would say, just like we did, um, understand your local laws. Uh, that would be number one. Uh, number two, I think is great to have a platform like Get Paid for Your Pad where you've got a different wide array of experiences to kind of, uh, you know, leverage your decisions on. And number three, I would say, is get consultants like my wife and I. You know, my <laughs> wife did all the interior decorating. I did all the exterior design. And we, you know, we bumped our heads uh, trying to get time. this together and uh, trying to build this masterpiece so that you wouldn't have to, you know. And that's part of, you know, life of being a pioneer and being in the front is that, you know, you're willing to take those bumps and bruises. So um, if it's something that you firmly believe in, um, you know, go for it. You know, we had to make that conscious decision, you know, having a house this big and having our children gone, what were we going to do with it next? Yes, empty nesters. We had to, we really had to figure out what were we going to do with it next. Um, and, and what we're doing right now allows us to maximize our earning potential 
and it's been one of the most uh, fun experiences that we've had because we've been meeting <laughs> such new people and you know now we're uh, really enjoying this space we're Awesome. Well, congratulations with, uh, with your success. It's, uh, I'm very impressed uh, from the, the design of the house, uh, the way you set up the website, the social media channels and everything. It's, uh, I think you guys did a great job. So thank you so much for taking the time and coming on the show to share everything with the listeners. Thank you, Jasper. And um, did, uh, we'd love to offer your uh, listeners a uh, pro promotional code to actually book with us when they're visiting in the area. Is that all right? Absolutely. Go for it. Uh, GP 2019. So uh, your listeners, if you're interested in booking with us at the Nelson Manor .com, please use GP 2019. And of course, Taurus and I are out here on social media. And, um, and that will give you 20% off your stay. That'll give you 20% off your stay. So we look forward to seeing all your listeners and beyond here at the Nelson Manor. Hey, Jasper, have yourself a happy holiday, too. With family. Thank, thank you very much. And uh, of course, a happy Christmas and a happy new year uh, yeah. to all the listeners as well. Um, I will publish another episode. The next episode is going to be in the new year. So I hope everyone's got their goals set for 2019. I certainly have. And uh, I hope it's going to be a great year. Uh, just like 2018 has been a great year. And um, well, that that's it. Thanks, guys. Uh, guys thanks for for coming on the show. If I'm ever in the in the area, I'll I'll definitely uh, definitely. I'll definitely send the message. And you uh, know you got a place to stay. You always have a place to stay here at the Nelson Matter. Right. Do I get to use that code? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then so. And then so. <laughs> awesome. So for anybody who uh, wants to visit there, the Nelson Manor .com near Washington, D.C. And that's it for the year of 2018. Thanks, everybody, for the support, for all the, the, the listens and, the, and the, the emails and the, everything that I've had received from, from all of you this year. It's been absolutely amazing, and I'm, I'm sure 2019 is going to be even more amazing. So thanks, everybody. All and right. The next one.